Reunion Island is known for the variety and beauty of its landscapes. The ancient volcano traces have become popular circuits for hikers worldwide, and its volcano is one of the most active in the world. The Indian Ocean offers a variety of fish to the delight of the food-loving traveler. For this episode of What's Cooking in the World, we'll stay on shore along St. Paul Beach. We're 30 kilometers from Saint-Denis on the west coast. Anyone who's been to Reunion Island has witnessed the kindness of its people. It was easy for me to find a guide to show me around St. Paul's Market, one of the nicest on the island. His name's William, and he knows the market and the culinary traditions of Reunion. So we're at the market in St. Paul, that's to say, on the waterfront of St. Paul, which is one of the oldest towns of Reunion. An outdoor market that takes place every Friday and Saturday. So these outdoor markets were first opened because at that time there were indoor markets and only bazaars could come to sell their products. The bazaars are vendors who buy the products, who would get them from the farmer, the market gardener, and sell them in towns. So obviously the outdoor markets have evolved. They're called outdoor and people come especially for that. They do nothing else the rest of the week, they grow vegetables. So what can we find? You can find all the products of market gardening, that is to say all vegetables, whether breads, leafy vegetables, lettuces, roots, carrots, uh, cassava, sweet potato, taro and so on. You also have people who prepare ashar, that is to say chopped vegetables fried in a pan with a little turmeric. And then they cook vegetables chopped sui Chinese style. You know those mixed vegetables. There are carrots, cabbage, broccoli, snow peas that we cook. Bread and Chinese bread, we fry them in a wok. And all this is sold directly by producers. Directly from producer to consumer. I dream of this being more common back home. On this market, whoever comes to Reunion wonders what these products with unknown names are. Brinjal, for instance. Nice brangel. These are aubergines. Well, this, we eat it in rugel, that is to say, we grill it over a wood fire, if you can, and then we mash them with a fork. Some people call it aubergine caviar, but we call it brinjal. It's a great in pig leg curry. Ah, the chouchou. Yes, smoked ruga is good. So, chouchou, there are various sorts. There used to be thorns on it, on the fruit. That's what you call chayot in France. And now we have a variety that has no thorns. Why? Because when they're small, we put them in vinegar and candy them in pickles. There are many ways of eating chouchou. In a salad, in a gratin, in a curry sauce, in casserole, as a dessert, in cake. You can cook anything with chouchou. Everyone knows courgettes, it's common. You can eat them in mush, in a salad, potatoes, very nice potatoes for French fries, to cook French fries. See the length of them, they're really beautiful. We have beautiful lettuces. Now here, these are Chinese bread. So we've got the lettuces we eat like that with vinaigrette dressing, and we've got the petse bread. We call this rolled petse. It's like cabbage. It tastes a bit like apple. You eat it in salad, raw, finely grated. Or we fry them and serve them with rice in a curry. So there you've got two sorts, the rolled petse and petse to be fried, to cook fried breads. We fry them in a wok, a Chinese wok or in a pan. We cut them in thin slices and then we fry them with onions, garlic and ginger. And it accompanies the rice and curry. That's it. William can't be stopped when it comes to reunion cuisine, and it's about time to talk recipe. Here's one for Cod Rougaille for four people by Georges Somorandi. First of all, the ingredients. The first thing to do beforehand, the day before, soak the salted cod in clear water. You can change the water every six hours. To start with, slice the onions finely. Same thing with the large chilies. 
remove the stems. Then cut them into halves. And make sure you remove the seeds. You can't eat them. Dice the tomatoes. That's easy. Boil the cod twice to remove the salt entirely. Once it's cooked, crumble up the meat. Make sure you remove the bones, which are often real needles. Set aside to cool. Finally, chop the green onions. To cook, fry the cod in a bit of oil until brown. It'll take about eight minutes. In another frying pan, fry the onions and brown them. Add the diced tomatoes and cook over low heat for a good 10 minutes, checking now and again. Water down with half a bowl of water. Add the chopped chili and the cod. Now the green onions. Brown them for five minutes. To finish up, throw in the chopped green onions. And it's ready. It's important to serve immediately with a traditional accompaniment, the most simple being rice with achar. Even if cod isn't a fish that's found off the shore of Reunion, rugai cod is a simple recipe, tasty and economical. I'm back at St. Paul Market, considered the hottest town on the island with Saint-Gilles. Here, it only rains 40 days a year. It's late in the morning. It won't take long to shell a coconut. Its water is refreshing and diuretic. Meanwhile, William is strolling along the aisles of the market he knows by heart. OK, here are samosas. Samosas come from India. These are small triangles of dough stuffed with either meat or cheese, pork or chicken. You can put whatever you want inside. They're small triangles, they're very nice, slightly spicy, they're delicious. Then you've got chili sweets. Chili sweets are a variety of peas called cape peas. We make flour from them and sprinkle water over to make small pancakes. These are hot ones because they're called chili sweets, also from India. And there you've got egg rolls that come from China. 
They're stuffed as well. Then there's Chinese vermicelli inside. It's rolled dough and we eat them with lettuce. And here's stuffed chili. We saw a large chili earlier on. This is achar chili. And then they're stuffed with pork inside. There we've got chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets that are delicious too. They're chicken legs dipped in batter and then fried. That's it. And you've got a broad choice of what you want to taste. So people are doing their shopping. They're enjoying themselves. It's a little snack during the shopping. It peps you up. There, and a chili sweet in each of them. That's it. <laughs> How much is it? Two dollars twenty, please. Thank you. Thank you. You can keep the bag. I don't need it. Ah, plastic bags, plague of our time. Reunion has a multicolored population: European, African, and Asian. So its cuisine is spicy. So here's a beautiful stall of chili and spices. So there you've got whole candied chili, chili puree, crushed chili with lemon. You've got achars, you know, they're vegetables or sliced lemons, candied with turmeric or chili. There you've got the spices to make curry. You've got turmeric, you've got garam masala. There are two sorts of garam masala, one without chili and the other one with chili. Garam masala is a Tamil dish. It's often cooked with young goat. So, as you see what's written here, goats, billy goats for sale. All you have to do is buy the young goat and cook it with the masala. And then the chili. This is cabri chili. That's right, we call it cabri chili. It has a strong flavor. We use it in curries. This is another variety of chili. And these are small hot peppers or bird peppers that are normally much smaller, but these are very good. Speaking of goat masala, Williams made me curious. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him cook it. Here's what you'll need for four. We'll start this recipe with the onions. They have to be finely sliced. Then use a mortar to prepare the aromatic seasoning. Cut up the ginger. Add the garlic cloves. Sprigs of thyme. A large tablespoon of salt and then crush well with a pestle. Cut up the tomatoes and prepare the tamarind juice. You have to dilute tamarind paste to 100 milliliters of water. You'll find tamarind paste in exotic grocery stores. It's time to cook the goat. Brown it in hot oil. Season well with salt and pepper. If you can't find goat, lamb will do the trick. Add the sliced onions. Add the aromatic paste made with ginger, garlic and thyme. Cook five good minutes. And add the tomatoes, 
the masala, which is a blend of spices mainly made with coriander seeds, cumin, mustard, and fenugreek, and turmeric. Mix well together so that the meat absorbs the flavors. It's time to add curry tree leaves. It's a tree whose green or dried leaves are used to make curry. Finally, pour in the tamarind juice. Water down with 300 milliliters of water. Stir well again. Simmer over low heat for one hour. This goat or lamb masala is nice with rice, a nice mango rugai, and a little full-bodied red wine would be a perfect match. It is said that the town of St. Paul is one of the largest in France, and it's true. It spreads out from the ocean into the Mafati area. On this high and varied land, various fruits and vegetables can be grown. The volcanic soil enriches the subsoil for the benefit of small producers who come here to the St. Paul market, where William continues his gourmet walk. Here are black radishes. They're very beautiful, very nice, very good for the health and the liver. No, it's actually very nice. Oh, it must be rough. Just with salt. You cut it into very thin slices. They say you live five years longer. It's very good for the liver and the kidneys. I'll try. I'll see. That's right. If you cut them into very thin slices and you put a little salt on them and then you bite into it. You bite into it like that? OK. It's very, very nice. Well, I'll give it a shot then. Oh, you must taste in it and it's rare. Yeah, that I know. So here are the tangors. It's a variety of oranges grafted with clementines. And they're really, really nice in juice. Very juicy. The only thing is they're hard to peel, but then there's so much smooth inside, it's unbelievable. Mm. Very, very nice. You can buy some, they're delicious. You can mainly find tangles in the west, in the southwest more, that is to say the Titus Island, St. Joseph, uh, La Plaine de Grec. It shouldn't be forgotten that La Plaine de Grec is also known for its saffron and turmeric too, but now we're interested in tangles. They're very nice. Can I have two kilos? I'm letting William carry on with his shopping as the late morning sun is getting really hot. Everything grows in Reunion. The temperature's stable, the soil is rich, and the island has enough fresh water supplies, which is essential for crops. It's probably why the first visitors who discovered this uninhabited island decided to settle down here. It's in Mafati that I'm inviting you to discover our third recipe from Reunion. It's cooked in the Tamareo B&B by Jean-Yves Begue. He will cook for us and a group of hikers a baba fig chicken curry. He begins with the baba fig, which is nothing else than a banana tree flower. Curry is a generic term which describes all the dishes cooked in a sauce in Reunion, but also in Mauritius. There are meat curries, fish curries and vegetable curries.
he slices spring onions finely, very common in Creole cuisine. Same thing with the ginger. In a mortar, Jean-Yves pours a lot of salt on this onion and ginger mix. He crushes it all, adds some black pepper, and we might as well add a bit more ginger. Jean-Yves has now got a nice aromatic paste. In a frying pan, he pours the oil. When it starts sizzling, he puts in the pieces of chicken to brown them. He adds the chopped onions. The aromatic paste. And the tomato puree. This dish is enhanced by herbs. Thyme, four spice mix, a curry tree leaf, and a large tablespoon of turmeric. To release the flavors even more, water down with half a liter of water. Adjust the seasoning with a bit of salt and saute with a lid on. While the chicken is cooking, Jean-Yves Beg rinses the sliced baba fig carefully with clean water. He salts it and rinses it under water again. The baba fig is now all nice and clean, ready to meet the chicken. Traditionally, and outside of celebration meals, curry is served in the pot that was used for cooking. With this baba fig chicken curry, this group of hikers will get what they need in their stomach to get back on the trails of the Mafati. I'm going back for the last time to St. Paul Market, whose black sand beach reminds you that the Piton de la Fournaise is nearby. Vendors and customers are exchanging euros in a relaxed atmosphere. <laughs> Blending in among locals, tourists are enjoying this magical market and are discovering unknown flavors of fruit and vegetables they've often only heard of. William, my gourmet guide, has decided to have a snack break. Walking and talking at the same time has made him hungry. And whatever he wants, is right in front of him. Let's go. Two skewers, please. A little paper towel. Bon appétit. So, Indian Ocean cuisine is very rich because there have been many contributions from various ethnic groups. That's to say, Hindus, Arabs, Chinese, Africans, Malagasy. So, you can see there are many dishes with a range of vegetables and roots and products that are very diverse. So we've got a huge choice. And we've got all meats. We've got pork, beef, chicken, duck, turkey, goose, guinea fowl, whatever meat we want. 
but then especially a lot of vegetables, many vegetables and roots. So each ethnic group has bought some of its dishes. There are some that have blended, that have improved. We took a little of everything, a little Chinese, a little Hindu, and everything was all mixed up, which gave us an extraordinary culinary wealth. The Reunion people are very greedy and eat, I won't say all day long, but they eat several times a day because they snack a lot. We saw it with the samosas. We saw it with the kebabs, for example. On outdoor markets, you find immediately something to eat and something to drink. There are fresh drinks, so you can snack all day. I'll let William finish his kebabs, and I've got a thought for the dodos, those birds that look like giant chickens and have totally disappeared, gobbled up by the first generations of starving inhabitants. I'm sure they'd be surprised to see the many visitors on the beaches delighted to thumb their noses at winter. <laughs> 